Uh, may I have the attendance, please? Uh, Mrs. Dealey? Here. Mrs. Blyford? Mrs. Massengill? Dr. Miles? Present. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Ms. Shea? Ms. Hobbs? Very good. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? The only adjustments are the additional appointments that have been added. 10.3, high school math teacher. 10.4, Wentworth School special education teacher. And 10.5, district-wide point six school psychologist. Thank you. Superintendent's report. So good evening, everyone. I am really excited to report that some of the kids started coming back this week for fall athletics. Um, and we have more students this year participating in fall athletics than we have had in the last couple of years. We have um, high, high 490, 400s, close to 500 students um, participating in fall sports this year. And they're um, very busy on the fields each day. I got to interact with some of our teams today as we were filming a video for opening day, which was lots of fun. Um, and they have a, a football scrimmage on Monday against Lewiston and then um, a few other things going on next week. But um, our athletic director, Mike Legage, has reported that it has been the smoothest start ever. Um, not because of the new superintendent, but because of the um, online registration and the family ID um, program that's been put in place. And so all of these systems, including the enhancements to the website, have really made for a smooth start. So um, we just want to congratulate all of the folks who are a part of that and, of course, Mike Legage for his leadership in um, making that a positive experience for everyone. And also our Oak Hill players are back and getting ready. Um, for their season, if you will, as well. So, getting ready. Very good. Monday, the um, the one other thing I will just say is that our opening day for staff is Monday, August 29th, but the buildings are looking great. I was in almost every building today, and um, the custodial crew's been doing a fantastic job pu pulling everything together, and it has that start of school year shine and smell. Um, and we'll have all the staff together for opening day on the 29th. Very good, thank you. And the chair's report, I have a letter that I would like to read to the board and to put into the public record at this time. And it's from um, a school board member, Jody Shea. Chairwoman Bealey, I respectfully submit my comments for the record. As school board members, it is our responsibility to ensure adequate funding for our schools. Question two provides the increasing funding that no Scarborough should be receiving if the state were funded 55% of education costs. And she's referring to question two that will be on the ballot in November. It is estimated that Scarborough will receive an additional, an estimated additional four to five million dollars in funding through the state's EPS formula if this referendum passes. We here in Scarborough have felt, have felt the pain of reduced funding from the state for many years, and our property owners have had to bridge the gap through increased property taxes. I feel this referendum not only provides increased education funding to Scarborough, but also helps to relieve the strain on local taxpayers. It is unreasonable to expect the average middle class citizen to pay increased property taxes year after year to maintain municipal services and a quality education system while giving income tax breaks to the top 1%. Again, thank you for reading my comments into the record. I am in full support of question two, which is called Stand Up for Students, and I encourage our citizens to obtain the facts on this referendum and give it their full consideration. Jody Shea. And that ends the chair's report today. Are there any committee reports for 7.0? Yes, Jackie. Uh, <coughs> I am happy to report that it appears as though we have settled the contract with the teachers. 
The reason I can't say for certain is that the teachers will have to vote on it and then the board will have to vote on it. So the first meeting in September, we will have uh, an executive session and go over the contract so that you will have an understanding of it. Uh, I think that uh, Assistant Superintendent Sizemore and, and Mrs. Murphy and Mrs. Massengill, if she was here, would say how easily, if you will, the process worked and that uh, both our representative and that, the representative from the Teachers Association have worked together and uh, we have a draft, as I say, we have the draft and uh, you will have a copy of that draft before your next meeting and, uh, but the teachers have a process where they have to have so many days they, and they will present it, I think, on the first day, maybe on Monday. Is that when they're going to do it, Joanne? Uh, you know? no, I don't know the date yet, but it won't be Monday. It won't, will not be Monday? No. no. But it'll be soon. It'll be that first week. Right. So by the second, by the second meeting in September, mm -hmm. uh, we should have that affirmed and we should be able to vote on that as a board. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Any other committee policy? Um, policy, we just met upstairs. Um, we had um, a meeting with the Athletics and Activities Director, Mike Legage, and the Business Manager, Kate Bolton, and we talked about some potential changes to um, the policy. I can tell you exactly. KJA and JJIBC. Um, it's relations with booster groups and just talking about um, some of the financial oversight and some changes that may um, that will be presented. Um, hopefully, what do we decide? September, in October, in the fall. October, <laughs> sometime in the <laughs> fall. There'll be a presentation. As the yeah, as as the seasons change, there'll be a meeting. Uh, we'll have a presentation at a full board mm -hmm. meeting so everyone can understand uh, why the changes are being proposed. Um, we need to run it by Drummond and Woodsum to just make sure we have covered all our bases. But um, that's where we are with policy at the moment. Very good, thank you. 8.0 public comment. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak at this time? Please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public session. 9.0, new business. 9.1, the first reading of policy JLCD, administering medication to students. Kelly, do you want to talk about that first or you want to? Um, I think we need to have a motion. Motion. First. Would you like to do that? Uh, I move approval as presented. Second. For the first reading. For first reading. Yeah. Second. Okay. So policy JLCD is administering medication to students. Um, we have not made a ton of changes. Um, one of the things we have included that would be notable for parents um, it's under self-administration of medications that we, um, this dispensation of over-the-counter medications. With prior parental legal guardian permission, students may receive certain over-the-counter medications, including sunscreen. Um, we felt that the policy was outdated to exclude sunscreen, um, to need a special doctor's note when everyone knows best practice is that sunscreen is applied liberally and often, and kids know that and are good at applying it themselves with little supervision, I think, with the younger kids, but um, we felt that that was time to update that. Is there something you wanted to say about that, Mrs. Sizemore? Yes, I just wanted you to know that I did uh, review this with our school uh, health services, mm -hmm. and they are all set with it, and mm -hmm. we'll be working with our school doctor to get the order for sunscreen. And so it would be the same as like over-the-counter Tylenol or Advil? Well, but parents are going to have <coughs> to bring in the sunscreen. Correct. Um, so that... Um, uh, but we will have an order to, uh, they will have an order to administer it. Right. So but they were all set with this. I great. I just wanted to follow up. Great. That was, um, it just seemed outdated that you have to apply sunscreen on your child potentially at 630 in the morning and it needs to last all day on an outside field trip or activity until 3 p.m. So um, that is a change that um, would be of note to parents and um, there's one other change. A medication label that provides sufficient information may be used in lieu of a written order unless the medication is to be administered for more than 15 consecutive days. So if you 
have an antibiotic that you need to take during the school day. You don't need a note if you have the prescription bottle because those are generally administered for less than 15 days. Anything more would need the note. So, um, And I did receive a question from Jackie about um, the storage, and I didn't know the answer, so I thought I would ask here. Um, it, it says a, a marked containers will be provided. Do we provide those? Yeah. Under storage, if you look at storage um, number two under storage. Uh, yes, we have medicine boxes that are locked. Okay. And so when the prescription comes in, uh, they have individual boxes where they put that prescription in. And, and it goes um, right in there. And it's locked. Okay. And um, another question was, it says there's a record book, a medical record book. Is that a physical book or is that electronic? Well, this year uh, we are going to a new ser service with uh, software. It's called HealthSource, and um, it will all be um, stored online. Okay. Uh, we used to do, the nurse would, a uh, student would come in, they'd write down the information. This year, um, they've had training this summer, and they will be going to a new software program that will enter all uh, student information when they come in, uh, keep logs. Um, it also will uh, send a parent an email when prescriptions are getting low to remind them, uh, but it's an online um, package for our health services. Because my question was, is there a separate unit for each student? In other words, if each of us went into the nurse to get medication, would it be Kelly Murphy, Kate Miles, no, on the a, same page? No, that, it's that, uh, each child had a separate page. And, and but that it, was my concern because yeah. it isn't spelled out. And thank you. I figured that's what it was, but yeah. I needed to ask the question. And now it's pull up that child's name, right. get it that all. information, enter it, and that's how the logs will be <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions on this policy? Seeing none, all in favor? Four and three absent. <coughs> 9.2 is the second reading of policy JLF, the reporting child abuse and neglect. Move approval as presented. Second. Any questions? Discussion? Yes, Jackie. Uh, I have a question on definitions B, second line, for a child's health or welfare, and I'm wondering if it should say for a child's health and welfare. I mean, that's kind of picky, but from, from my perspective, it gives a different connotation. I think if we were going to change it, I would change it to and or, because it it might not be a situation where it's both, but I would put and or. And or. I, I could accept that. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Wait a minute. I don't think so, but. All right. I don't think you do either. <laughs> I sent the questions to Kelly. So yeah, that was the only one you had for that one. I always do that so. ahead of time so she knows. All in favor? Four, three absent. <laughs> and 9.3, the second reading of JLFE, suspected child abuse neglect reporting form. Motion? Move approval. Second. Any discussion? I just have a question of, of the superintendent and probably <coughs> Joanne because Ruby hasn't been here very long, but. Uh, this is a form we've used in the past. No, this is a new this report. Is a whole new this report. is a new report <coughs> and a form that is by the state because um, the person who is notifying of or a DHS report gives it to the designee in their building and then within 24 hours they need to receive a re this report back signed notifying them that a report uh, report was made to DHS. That is a new state requirement. Correct. I, I was aware of the state requirement. Yeah. And I just and our administrators have seen the form. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we will be doing a training with social workers and school nurses in regards to this form. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Niggling little question. So, any person associated with the child 
at the school can file this report, correct? Yes. yes. Is it easy for that person to find things like the child's birth date and grade? Is that readily accessible to the person filling out this report, or is that onerous? Power school. I think mm -hmm. it's all mine. If, yeah. if you're an employee, okay. you can get in power school. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So if and if you can't, if that, as long as you notify and fill in the child's name, the person who you give the report to yep. can add, add all the other information. That I was making that assumption. So that if it was a cafeteria worker right. no. or, a, <coughs> right. or a janitor in the building <coughs> who witnessed something, right. you just fill in what you know. Right. Correct. And the administrator. Can. Thank you. All in favor? Four? Yeah. <coughs> And 9.4, motion to adopt a resolution supporting the Stand Up for Students campaign. So you may recall that we had um, Sarah Singer come and speak with us last time we met. Um, and so I know you've all had time to think this over. Is there a motion on the floor? Uh, move to adopt a resolution supporting Stand Up for Students. Do we have it drafted yet? We do, and I had given it to you the last time. Yeah, the oh, last time. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'll, also, let's go ahead and second the motion. So that we can. You did second it? Okay. Good. Any discussion on this? I, I just, uh, having worked for so long with, with the Maine School Boards Association, and Jody said it passionately in her in her correspondence. We truly, truly need more funding. And uh, this would be a way to get it. Uh, I know that, for example, we are not the only community uh, in dire straits. My sister lives on a lake in the summertime and they only have 30 children in that community who go to school. And, and they're paying almost twice as much per student as we are because they have so few children. Mm -hmm. And their taxes on the lake doubled. I said, get over it. It's happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. it, he didn't like that. But it, mm -hmm. as I say, it's really critical these days. Kate? Okay. I have just two quick points I want to make, and one is one that I that I made at the last meeting, and that is that it's that it's indisputably more expensive to educate students in Maine than it was just five years ago, let alone ten years ago. So, even if the number of students remains the same, the cost of educating them has gone up. And the other thing I want to say is that one of the things I really like about this is that it's trying really hard to keep the burden off of people who are the least able to accept the burden. And I think that that's a really important point. Um, you know, we're not looking to people on fixed <coughs> incomes to dramatically increase their spending. We're looking to people who have the means to increase their spending. And I think that's an important point and one that I think resonates with a lot of Scarborough voters. Sally? Yeah, and I just will say, you know, refer to my last comments in the meeting. I think it's um, overdue that there is a change to how schools are funded in any way that that can happen and I think this is a fair way to do it and I just want to remind people again that it's only the income over 200000 that has the additional tax assessed on it. So it's not if you make over $200,000 that you are then given an additional tax on your entire income of 3%, it's only the income that exceeds 200000 so if you make 201,000, it's you know minimal, minimal impact, and can afford it. Um, I spoke to a, a few different groups about this in the past several days, and um, also some individual people contacted me regarding it. Um, <clears throat> so I decided to call this one particular group called the Maine Center for Economic Policy. They do research pertaining to Maine's economy, <coughs> taxes, families, health care. They would work with legislators to protect the interests of families and, and ensure fairness and um, shared prosperity. To me, this is a no-brainer. Uh, the school board, a school board needs to fight for funding um, here and across Maine. For me, even if Scarborough didn't get much or got a minimal amount, 
I still feel it's the moral thing to do, it's the right thing to do across the state of Maine because students will benefit. Um, and again, too, I think your point was really good, um, Kelly, that, that it's, you know, 3% on the earnings after $200,000, and that is a critical piece of information because some people who contacted me said, oh, yeah, that's not right because you know, it's on their 200000 And so that's, that's a really important piece as we move forward that the board supports because what I have learned is there's going to be quite a bit coming out, both in terms of data, research, and information from both sides on this issue as groups are already planning their strategies for the fall. So um, I, I do realize there will be some opposition to this. However, for me as an educator, you know, as, as a taxpayer, um, as a school board member, I just believe that this is the right thing to do to endorse this resolution and to vote in favor of this ballot item in November. So it's, I think it's, it's on us to get out there and talk with people in our community to help them understand what this is all about. So all in favor of this resolution, four, and of course three are absent. <coughs> 10.0 for appointments. Would you like to sure, walk I will. us through 10.1, the high school math teacher? Yes, I would. 10.1, um, high school math teacher Matthew Anderson has been nominated to fill this newly created position. Mr. Anderson obtained his Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education from the University of Maine. He has taught numerous courses in mathematics at Edward Little School in Auburn for four years, including algebra, geometry, personal finance, and probability and statistics. Mr. Anderson will be placed on step five of the bachelor's scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Matthew Anderson as high school math teacher. And would you like to do 10.3, the, the other high school math teacher as well? Sure. Um, Jean Faulkner has been selected to fill this position created by a resignation. Ms. Faulkner received her Bachelor's of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. She received her Master of Science degree in Education for the University of, from the University of Southern Maine. Ms. Faulkner taught various algebra and geometry classes at Sacopee Valley High School, as well as several science, physics, and engineering classes. Ms. Faulkner will be placed on step three of the master scale per the collective <coughs> bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Jean Faulkner as a high school math teacher. So we might as well just stay with 10.4 and 10.5, and that way we'll do the coaching appointments after. Perfect. 10.4, Wentworth School Special Education Teacher, Academic Life Skills, Laura McKenzie, has been chosen to fill this position created by a resignation. Mrs. McKenzie received her Bachelor of Science degree in Biology from Palm Beach Atlantic University in West Palm Beach, Florida. She continued her studies with a concentration in education at Indian River State College in, Point, in Port St. Lucia, Florida. She has been a special education teacher in both Port St. Lucie and Waterboro for three years. Mrs. McKenzie will be placed on step four of the Bachelor's Plus 15 scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Laura McKenzie as a Wentworth School Special Education teacher. 10.5, district-wide point six, part-time school psychologist. Renee Lamb has been nominated to fill this position created by a resignation. Mrs. Lamb received her Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology from the University of Maine at Orono. She received her master's degree in psychology from the University of Southern Maine. She has been a school psychologist for Poland area schools for 11 years and for the last year at Saco Middle School. Mrs. Lamb will be placed on the 13, on step 13 of the master's scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Renee Lamb as a district-wide point six school psychologist. Move approval. Second. Very good. All in favor? Four. <coughs> Three absent. That brings us to 10.2, the high school fall coaching appointments. 10.2, high school fall coaching appointments. Um, there's several listed here. I don't know if you want me to read each one. <laughs> no. uh, move okay. approval as presented. 
Is there a second? Second. Very good. All in favor? Four. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, please. I second. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you. That was awesome. Gee whiz. See that, Mike? Like that. Wow. Less than 30 minutes. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs>